Welcome to Network Security Basic Module, part number nine, and the last part. Here we'll show a little bit about the Aalborg University Honey Jar project, which is mainly run by students, uh, uh, but which has given us a lot of insights into how botnets operate. So what we have here is really a malware testing environment consisting of three main components. First of all, uh, if we start from the, from the right side, there is a test environment where we are able to execute malware and uh, run it to see how it behaves. Um, the test environment contains both inmates um, and some infrastructure that emulates the internet. Uh, then we have a containment part, which makes sure that we don't send any harmful um, traffic out to the, to the real internet, but still allows to have some of the necessary access, for example, so we can observe the command and control traffic. And finally, we have the analysis part where we can collect and analyze the data, for example, using them for training and testing the machine learning algorithms that I mentioned before. Um, so the test environment it contains, uh, so if we start on this uh, right side of the figure again, uh, the test environment contains a number of machines, pieces, and as well as virtual machines, which we can infect. Uh, in order to make sure that our malware is actually behaving as it is in the real world, we have also done some automatized scripts for emulating normal user behavior. Uh, and by saying normal user behavior, that's really something, some simple internet browsing that we open our browser, go to Google, search some words in a dic dictionary, click on a link, um, close down the web browser, uh, uh, and so on. Uh, we also have a Facebook account, so we can open the web browser, go to Facebook, log in with a specific account for the purpose, log out and go out again. Moreover, to avoid that we have too much traffic to the outside world, we have implemented a DNS server and a Windows Network Connectivity Indicator Service server. So we don't have to, uh, so these are, are typically used by botnets and we can, um, in this way, we can reply to requests and, and show them that they are live and online without actually having to, uh, to connect to, to servers or machines outside our own network. So that's part of minimizing the amount of traffic that we are sending out to the internet. And actually, we, have, we also can do a bit more things and we are constantly working on improving this part. Um, yeah. um, so the possibility to control the, the image from a central machine is also important. So you can easily clean the machines in order to start new experiments and we can easily uh, install and execute different kind of malwares. In fact, this is not so trivial because when we are working with malware, we have to make sure that our that our central computer in the system doesn't accidentally become infected. Then about the containment part, we that's a component, as I said, that ensures that we can study the botnets without harming others. Um, one way of doing it is that by default, all outgoing traffic is filtered, so we block it, we don't allow it, but we can allow some connections um, based on a whitelisting. So when we know that it's harmless, which can be decided manually or semi-automatic or automatic, when we decide that, okay, this traffic is harmless, then we can let it through. I will show uh, uh, in the next slide how this can be actually done. Um, for the other parts, uh, this, is, this module as well as everything else is still under development. And um, uh, one of the things that we really would like to improve on is to automatize this assessment of which traffic can be allowed to leave the system. So here we can see an example of how this can be done. So this is a normal TCP handshake. So usually when the inmate would be communicating with the command and control server, setting up a TCP connection, would be that you send a SYN packet, a SYNAC, and an ACK. So that's a basic TCP three-way handshake. Um, what we do is that we have implemented a handshake module, which takes the connection. So whenever we, we get the request, um, we stop it in the handshake module, but we send a reply back. So the inmate believes that this is a general, genuine reply and continue conne uh, making the connection. Then we can see on the packets, on the first packet in the connection, we can assess, is this harmless or not harmless? Currently, this is a manual approach, but it can be semi-manual as well. And then we decide, okay, it's non-malicious, like sending a nick. 
Then we send a re reset packet back in order for the connection to be reset. And then the inmate will try to create the connection once again. A drawback of doing this is, of course, it's a manual process. It's also a drawback that resetting the connection might be seen from the bot as a sp suspicious behavior, and he or she might not uh, try to establish a connection again. Or, even worse, might not try to establish the connection um, exactly as it would have been otherwise. So here we would like to be able to keep this connection kind of in the air, and when we see that the connection is genuine, uh, that then we can uh, let it through by uh, um, by replaying the traffic uh, towards the IRC server. Okay, it's a little technical, but I hope it, may, it makes sense. Uh, in addition to the handshake module, we actually also have a web servers and so on in the internal network to make sure that if a web website is requested, we can send something back. It might not be the website that they did request, but we can at least show that we are online. Uh, for the monitoring part, um, we are able to monitor all the network activity. Here we have a chance in the real life, because if we are working on a real interface, let's say it's a 10 gigabit interface, or, or even uh, 4 times 10 gigabit interface, what it could be, then it's really a lot of data to, um, to work on. And even though we don't, when we study the, the network traffic, we don't need all the payload information, but we still have to process uh, and remove the information that we don't need. So here there is um, there is a big challenge in handling the, amount, the large amount of data. So that was a short introduction to our AU Honit Jar with the components we have, the test environment, the containment, and the data analysis. Now, please take quiz number 15. And since this is the last lecture, then after quiz number 15, you can take the final quiz, and then you're done with this module. Thank you very much for following the module and um, uh, hope to see you again another time.